Another day, another movie vlog for Asian cinema season. Uh, you know, recently I've been watching so many great films uh, for this Asian cinema season. Films I'd seen before, many films I'd never seen before, and just like almost classic after classic. And I feel like I've almost been spoiling myself on all these great Asian movies. So I kind of want to watch one that probably isn't going to be very good. Uh, and I've been excited to check this one out. I've mentioned this many times now, but I am a member of Filmstruck and they have a lot of great films on there. And this one I saw while just scrolling through. And they have a section for Toshiro Mifune's samurai movies. In fact, I'll just show you very quickly. Okay, so here we have on Filmstruck the... Toshiro Mufune Samurai section, which collects 12 of his films where he played a samurai. Uh, we have Vendetta of a Samurai, which I might watch, I've never seen that. We've got Seven Samurai, the three samurai movies in the Samurai Trilogy, um, the Musashi Miyamoto series, We've got Throne of Blood, Samurai Saga, Yojimbo and Sanjuro, Sword of Doom, Samurai Rebellion, and then the Zatoichi meets Yojimbo movie. And uh, yeah, so they got some cool Mufune movies, but I found one that features him, but not in the role of a samurai. So let's just let's just get to it. Here we go by Kon Ichikawa, Princess from the Moon. Uh, this has been jokingly referred to as the Japanese ET. Uh, it's from 1987, two hours long, and uh, stars Toshiro Mufune. And it's a story of a a baby girl who arrives, you know, out of nowhere. And a couple decides to adopt this baby girl. It's the Princess Kaguya story, basically. If you've seen the, stu the Studio Ghibli film, The Tale of the Princess Kaguya, it's the same thing, but if the baby was delivered from space, I guess? It sounds crazy, it hasn't got good reviews, so I'm kind of just looking forward to it. But Toshiro Mufune, you know, even later on in his life, and I suppose this would be towards the end of his life, actually, I'm still intrigued to see it, you know. And I love the Princess Kaguya story, so I'm hoping this will be a fun watch that isn't that good of a film, but we'll see what happens, and I'll speak to you uh, in a little bit. And just like that, with the magic of editing, two hours have passed, and I've seen the film. And I can now talk to you about the film. And I have quite a lot of things to say about the film, although I feel like this is going to be one of the shorter movie vlogs. Then again, it is me. It wasn't great. It was like I was expecting in some sense, but also, I mean, I don't know. I was hoping it would be a bit more fun, a bit more 80s, a bit more cheesy. I, I was hoping for a bit more of the kind of indulgent side of the 80s, which was shown in the credits. <laughs> Very 80s English uh, power ballad in the credits, which was so jarring next to the actual ending of the film. Uh, I said, you know, this is kind of jokingly referred to as the Japanese E.T. has a similar ending, and it's an emotional ending, and, you know, it has this, you know, this, this kind of visual style to, to, the, to the ending, and the, the emotion of the characters, and, you know, it's meant to be this kind of gut punch of an end. And then it just cuts to a shot of trees and the credits, and Da, da 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 just proper like it was so weird but I kind of couldn't help but smile because I just love that again overindulgent kind of 80s-ness that was just such a hallmark of anything produced in that decade for some reason. The film, uh, directed by Kon Ichikawa who apparently has made so many different kinds of films and has three films in the book, A Thousand One Movies You Must See Before You Die, so I might get to some of his films. Uh, throughout this season and maybe I'll even pair up this movie vlog with a review of one of his other films This is clearly not a shining example of his work and it is the tale of the princess Kaguya the Story from hundreds of years ago the tale of the bamboo cutter about um, a couple a bamboo cutter and his wife who finds a baby in the in the forest and they raise her to be their own and the kind of shell that she was born in is made of gold and it brings them wealth and riches and uh, Kaguya becomes um, a coveted woman uh, in the in the village in the town and all the all the people want to marry her basically and she sends these three guys off to far distant lands to retrieve these impossible objects of le legend and myth to prove their worth as a suitor to her. What I liked about this version was that we had the Bamboo Cutter, played by Toshiro Mufune, just one of the greatest actors of all time, and his wife, who makes um, uh, cloth, and she's a weaver, basically. 
they had just lost their daughter, who was about five years old, and I don't think that was part of the original story. Um, if it, or at least the only thing I can judge it from is the Studio Ghibli film directed by Seo Takahata from a few years ago, The Tale of the Princess Kaguya, which was just an absolute masterpiece. I thought that was just one of the best animated films I've ever seen. So that's all I got to base it off, really. But they added this element where, you know, again, it could be from the original story, I don't know, but the couple had previously lost a daughter. So in gaining this child, there was this added emotion. Um, and it seemed as if the idea was, the, when the egg landed, uh, and it kind of fell off a spaceship, I suppose, it kind of it was landed right next to the grave of their daughter and so this weird kind of like you know sci-fi star trek blue laser thing flies over to the grave so it's implied that the 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 girl that was born or or whatever if she's taking human form if she's an alien from the moon it's all in the title princess from the moon she kind of took on the physical characteristics of their daughter because when they see her or at least the mother she's like kaya it's my daughter kaya she's back and, you know, the, the bamboo cutter is like, well, no, her eyes are blue, you know. Uh, so, but they decide to raise her anyway, and she grows up to be a, a full, you know, a young adult woman in next to no time at all. And then, you know, the, they, they get the wealth and so on. And, yeah, it, it kind of loses its um, its interest to me once they've got the wealth, and they're basically just living in this elegant kind of palace, um, and or at least a palace from, you know, back in those days. And... Kaguya is just sitting around basically and she's just this object to be coveted by these men because she's beautiful and uh, there's a love story but it's very much just born out of a guy who is you know bowled over by her beauty and that's it there's no real depth to the love story and there's no real depth to Kaguya as a character either she's just kind of this bystander you know there's a character of a blind girl who I thought was a really interesting character and I, th I wish we could have seen more of her or at least more of her relationship with Kaguya because there is a payoff to that relationship but I felt like it needed to be earned more. Um, Mifune was great. Uh, it wasn't actually that close to the end of his life as I thought. He died in 97, 10 years after this. But he only did like 8 more films after this so he definitely was winding down in his career. He's in his mid-60s when he made this film. And he was great. I mean, you can really tell how much older he is than obviously in the films that he's more well known for and that I know him more from from the 50s and 60s but it was really cool to, and it, there's the shades of his brilliance in there you know there's a scene where he's kind of laughing and it just reminded me of Kakuchio from Seven Samurai and but he's got that gruff nature to him but I loved how he kind of let it down a couple of times in the film particularly towards the end and actually I actually welled up just a little bit towards the end in, in his emotions and I thought he did a great job but it was certainly you know emotion that wasn't really earned from the story it was more from his performance that was so good uh, I love him he's, he's brilliant I thought he was great in the film the other actors are pretty good too and uh, the actress who played Kaguya was suitably beautiful and otherworldly in that sense and so she fit the kind of that mold of the character I like the sequence when uh, the bamboo cutter is carrying the baby in the egg and he drops it <laughs> and it rolls down the hill and the baby crawls out and it's like this prosthetic kind of animatronic baby but it's like so lifelike it's almost like scary and then it starts to grow and, it, and then it changes it to different actors I thought it was a really kind of almost trippy sequence actually uh, just very weird to see this kind of like fake baby but I'm glad that they didn't have an actual baby crawl naked out of this egg in that first shot what else can I say about the film? Like I said, I just feel like uh, Kaguya needed more characterization. And to be honest, in the Studio Ghibli film, there is that element too that, that, that she does have this blandness to her because she is from this other world. But in the Ghibli film, we get to see how frustrated she becomes with her new life, with the newfound wealth. In the Ghibli version, we see more of her, I guess, quote-unquote childhood when she's really young and just uh, enjoying that carefree side of life in the countryside where you don't have much of anything and you enjoy what you have. And so when she gets the wealth and she becomes Princess Kaguya and every man wants her and so on, she longs for that life. She longs for the simplicity of going back to where the beginning of her life on Earth started and thus brings out these emotions from her, you know. Here, the only strong emotion we get is that she just she doesn't want to go back to the moon. You know, uh, that's it really. I mean, I don't know. I feel like the, a few minor tweaks to a lot of elements in this film could have made it like a really great film. As it stands, it was good. It wasn't really good. Um, definitely wasn't great, you know. It was enjoyable. I'm glad I watched it. I don't know if I'd watch it again. 
Uh, I liked some of the elements of the ending with um, the spaceship coming back to, to retrieve Kaguya. There's some good effects and so on in a very 80s kind of way, of course. But yeah, a bit long, but at the same time, I feel like it, it could have delved into the characters a little more deeply. And uh, it, it just seemed to lose something along the way. Um, it lost its personality, I guess, once they became wealthy and it became more about the men wanting to, you know, um, become the husband of Kage, or to make her become their, their wife, you know. And I only was really that engaged when we were looking at the character of Kaguya through the, the, the perspective of their new, her new parents with Toshiro Mifune and his wife in the film. So, yeah, overall, it was what it was, you know. Uh, I was expecting more from it. I mean, really, it's, it's the tale of the Princess Kaguya. It's the tale of the bamboo cutter, but like it's a spaceship at the end. Like honestly, there, there's no difference. I mean, I was expecting it to be more sci-fi, but really, it's the exact same story. Only she came from a spaceship. I mean, the original story, the tale, the tale of the bamboo cutter. It's this girl who comes down and is, you know, from the moon, and she goes back to the moon at the end of the story. It's, you know, I mean, I, I don't know. I guess I was just expecting it to be a lot more science fiction infused than it was. Um, so in that sense I was kind of let down, but at the same time there's some good stuff in it, there's some good effects and things. There's a fight sequence on a beach with um, some assassins and a samurai and I was like, ooh, now we're getting somewhere. And like the proper like 80s sounding kind of chinks and the whoosh, you know, that was really cool. But the actual choreography and the filming of it was very messy and sloppy and I was disappointed by that scene too. It's middle of the road, you know, but... I'd rate it just a little bit higher than the middle of the road, say like a 3 out of 5 because of Mifune. And if you're a fan of him, I definitely think it's worth checking this out. It's not a bad film. It's just not a very good film. It really just sits right in the middle there. And it is this good story, but you need to inject more heart into it, you know. And if you look at something like E.T. where, you know, someone comes down, forms a relationship with a human, and then they have to say goodbye at the end. In E.T. it rips your heart out because... You love that character and you love the relationship that character has with other characters. And I felt like that was the flaw that, that held the movie back from being more than what it was. Which was, you know, a good adaptation of a very old tale, but not much more than that. So, there we go. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Hey, all right by me. <laughs> Apart from the fact he throws cans of Carlin into a tree. <laughs> yeah, he's really cool. Yeah, he's really cool. But he's not quite as cool as you. Cause...